welcome back. I am the RC Old Guy, and this is the DJ, DJI Hex Copter 550. Um, it runs with a NASA controller, and I have recently purchased the NASA GPS unit, which is on the top there, that little mushroom. Uh, sweet machine. Um, I've learned a ton on this machine. Um, geez, I don't even know what to say. It's been a, a, a long road since March. Um, learned quite a bit. Learned to do some mods on it, uh, set it up the way I want it. Now with the GPS unit, it's great. Um, one of the problems I was having most of all was with crashes. I had four or five. None of those crashes were due to flight operations. It was all due to broken props, or props that flew off while in flight. Um, <laughs> from what I'm hearing on the blogs, it's very common with the uh, DJI props. So what I've done is I purchased a set of Monto. Uh, these are carbon filled plastic props. They're not carbon fiber props, but they're carbon filled. Very stiff, haven't thrown any off yet. The only thing I had to do was to modify those. I had to ream them out. Um, I was speaking with somebody, I believe they said it was an eight millimeter uh, prop shaft. Uh, ream that you have to use on it. Um, I wasn't quite sure. I had just matched one up with one that I had and didn't really measure it, but it came out perfectly. Um, there are insert rings that go in those props for the lower half of the uh, prop body. Um, they're like little adapters that match up for uh, different size props. Don't really care for that. I'd rather have a solid core, but uh, it is what it is, you know. They're uh, about five bucks a set, so they're slightly less than buying Grotner props which I hear everybody raving about, but, you know, for, what, $10 a prop or so? <laughs> uh, that's a crisp expense, but I, I suppose if you got a lot of money invested and you don't want it to fall out of the sky, it's worth it. Um, these are definitely worth the money. Haven't broke any yet. Uh, I've only flown them a couple of times. My track record with the um, DJI props has been about every other flight I throw a prop and crash, so, you know, every maybe every two or three flights or so. But it's pretty consistent, which is uh, a little depressing because I would like to fly it over something other than grass. But I'm doing that for safety's sake at this point to test. But uh, here it is. And um, that's what she looks like. We have uh, the movie cam that I'm holding in my hand right now. I used to shoot. That goes right up in here, mounts here. I have another mounting location here for the uh, radio receiver unit that I have, the 1.2 gigahertz unit. And that plugs in there, and I have a uh, an FPV cam that mounts on this side underneath, actually right under here, so I can run two cameras on it at the same time. I actually have a third camera that I use um, for um, forward photography and up and down. which I was trying to see if I had it handy, but I don't, so. Um, at any rate, that's my F-550, and I'm going to take it out and do some course lock flights. Uh, course lock is very cool, very easy to fly. Um, if you're new and you've got one of these things and you've got it properly set up, good for you, because <laughs> it wasn't easy. However, uh, once you do get it set up, it's very accurate. It will it has like a heading hold. You can let go of the sticks. It basically stays in one spot. Um, if you've got the GPS centered like I do, right above the NASA controller, it has to be that way. I mean, you can fly it off the back wing. If your math is off, though, it's going to um, do what they call to toilet bowling. It's going to kind of hunt around a little bit for its center location when it's in, in, um, in a hover mode. But I eliminated all that. I went by zero, zero point. So, <laughs> and the other measurement you want to be aware of when you're setting up your NASA software for the GPS is the measurement from the bottom edge of the dish. You go to the center of gravity underneath your, your uh, copter. Mine, as you can see, it's got a battery under there, a uh, big old 1.6 pound battery, in fact. These are the uh, big monsters I'm running here, the Trinity uh, 6000s big pack. Very heavy, but it lasts probably a good uh, 10 minutes or so for flight, maybe a little longer. 
um, but you want to measure to about a centimeter underneath the bottom plate um, and that's about where your your center of gravity is going to be so that would be like uh, plus or minus 20 centimeters or whatever it is so but uh, very very cool but when you do put it on the course lock basically what you do is you set the copter down this is important you got to set it down turn it on and don't touch it for about 35 40 seconds it says 30 seconds and it's right on I let it go a little bit longer than that you want to make sure that you've got your switching set up on your radio correctly um, with mine I've got this is my flight mode switch and zero is off one is course lock, two is home lock. On the other side, we have the auxiliary switch, which is a three-way switch. And I have that for zero for GPS, one for Addy, Addy mode, and two is fail safe. Now on normal, the way they tell you to set it up, that last setting instead of being on fail safe would be on manual mode. I don't fly manual with this thing, it's too twitchy. Um, I fly Addy mode, and if you put it in GPS, it's GPS Addy too, Addy mode. Um, but I fly GPS and I fly Addy mode. Those are sufficient enough for me. I enjoy that. Um, so at any rate, what you want to do is after it acquires its position or its headlock, um, the LED will flash rapidly three second, uh, three times on the back or in a succession. Then what you want to do is flip your flight mode switch to course lock. You'll notice it'll go from green to a little amber on the um, the controller back here, which is right here on mine. You'll see that LED start to flash. That'll go red and green, and I'll tell you that it's armed and that it's uh, in the proper mode. But you want to have this switch in GPS on your um, auxiliary two switch, and you want to have this one go from zero to position one, and then you are. Uh, locked in but this must be off when you initiate your initial um, headlock so after it programs headlock and you're good to go you just flip it over and up it goes and you're ready to fly uh, the other thing about it now if you get the GPS versus the uh, other setup it used to be prior to the GPS when the stick is down in its lower position it will shut off after about three seconds three to six seconds in the lowest position so you gotta be careful when you're flying you shouldn't by the time you have it down that far, anyway, the thing's on the ground. There's no flight to it at all. It's its lost lift, pretty much. Um, but it does shut off, so there's no more having to, you know, cross the sticks to uh, make it go into shutdown mode. You just leave the stick down, and it does its own thing. Um, the other thing I have set up, like I said, on this, on the auxiliary two switch, right here, is the failsafe. So when I'm in trouble, if I throw that on failsafe, I have it set up right now where it just immediately lands. And basically, it just takes control, hovers in spot for a few seconds, gets its bearings, says, okay, time to go. And it starts to land. And it lands pretty slowly, very nice, very controlled. Goes right down, no problems. Got a bug on my machine. Get out of here. Pitch your bug. Um, so yeah, it works really well. Um, I've done the return to home, which is a little scary. That, um, for some reason, it, they have it programmed so it goes up. Uh, if you're at 20 meters, it'll hold at 20 meters and go back over and then land. If you're above 20 meters, it'll come down to 20 meters. If you're under 20 meters, it'll go up to 20 meters. 20 meters in uh, English is uh, 65 feet. So it's um, pretty far up there. <laughs> I'm hoping that... Um, at some point, uh, somebody comes up with a better plan for the uh, NASA Assist software. Maybe puts it uh, puts an option in there so you can uh, so you can set your own altitude on that and not have it to go up that far. I prefer 20 or 30 feet tops. I wouldn't think that uh, 65 feet is really necessary. But it does work. Like I said, it's a little frightening the first time you try it. Um, you have to really trust in your settings and make sure that you have everything done correctly. Um, but once you do, you'll know right away. I mean, if you shut it down and it does something crazy, then it's not set up correctly, obviously. Um, like I said, right now I have it set to just land. And you have to program that through the uh, NASA SIFT software. That's not something you can do on the fly with a switch on the radio. So there's no option for that. 
Um, you either tell it it's going to go home or you tell it it's going to land when you do your uh, initial programming. But you can change it if you just hook your PC into it. So that's not a big deal. i got a laptop I can do that with. So anyway, I'm going to do a little flight. And we're going to do some of the, uh, the uh, course lock flight. Which allows you basically, like I said, if you fly it, say, north, you can rotate the front of your craft in any orientation you want. So basically when you have your camera mounted up here, uh, it's really nice because you can still fly it back and forth, left and right, back and forth. Um, but you can still rotate this in any direction you want as you do that, which is really cool. So, um, so it's a neat little feature. I, I enjoy that. So away we go. We'll give it a try. Thanks for watching.